It's the kind of concession stand you find all over Pittsburgh. Classic Steelers jerseys prominently displayed right beneath the terrible towel. But this is not the concourse at Heinz Field. This is the O'Reilly Theater in the heart of Pittsburgh's cultural district, and its patrons have come to see a one-man play called The Chief. Its subject is Art Rooney, the late legendary owner of the Pittsburgh Steelers. And boy, does The Chief have a story to tell. We went to Mass. That's all you needed to know. We just went. That was it. But I guess if you wanted to, you could miss Mass, but you better be dead. <laughs> God knows there were enough masses to choose from. <laughs> Ascension Thursday, Assumption Tuesday, Retention this, Reduction that. The Feast of the Immaculate Reception. <laughs> I'm just checking to make sure you're paying attention. <laughs> In working on the play and trying to find out as much as I could about him, there's nothing bad about him. There, there was nothing. He was just wonderful. He was the sweetest, most gentle old guy that ever graced the streets of the north side of Pittsburgh, or this country, for that matter. Anybody who ever spent a moment with the chief will tell you the same thing. And believe me, there's quite a few of us who spent a moment with the chief. It's always amazing to me everywhere I go, uh, any part of the city, and, and at, at times any part of the country, I bump into Steeler fans, and, and it's amazing how many of them have a story about my grandfather. When we would go to the airport going to a league meeting, and I would be with him, you know, just maybe the two of us, and I'd be there, I'd say, we're going to miss the plane. He'd be talking to everybody in the airport. And he'd say, well, you go ahead and get the tickets, go to the gate, get the tickets straightened out. He says, and I'll get there, you know, and, he, and I'm yelling at him, come on, they're loading the plane up. Art Rooney made you feel, when he ran into you, like it was the most important thing that happened to him that day was to see you and shake your hand. When he shook your hand, he put it in there and he let it stay in there and let you feel it. He didn't put it in and take it out. He didn't talk to you and look away and not look you in the eye. And he did that when he walked through the community his community, talking to each and everybody. It was always his community, and Art Rooney became its most beloved figure, with a life that was equal parts Horatio Alger and Damon Runyon. He was the son of an Irish immigrant pub owner. He grew up on the very spot where Three Rivers Stadium was built, and he lived his entire adult life in the same house on Pittsburgh's north side. He was a classic Steel City kid, whose two great talents as a young man were gambling and fighting. He was a tremendous boxer, but he was also a tremendous street fighter. He was somebody that you would call if you wanted somebody knocked out, you know. Eventually, he managed other fighters as a professional promoter. But he made his fortune the old-fashioned way, at the racetrack. He might have been a winner picking horses, but his team couldn't outrace anyone. The Steelers went 39 seasons without a single playoff victory. But no matter how bad things got, Rooney was always there for his players. Teams hire people who, to be human re resource people, if you will, to, or player development people. I mean, Mr. Rooney did all of that. It was amazing how he knew every player. I mean, I'm talking about in training camp. And he'd, he'd make it his business to speak with all of them, some way. His favorite way to spend time with a player was to share one of his ever-present cigars. He'd have them in his pocket and he'd be walking around, you know, with his hand behind his back. And he'd stop by your locker and he'd talk to you and he'd give you one, you know. And Oh, uh, you know who likes a good cigar? Joe Green. Whenever I'm on the road and I see a good cigar, I always bring one home for Joe. He likes to come in the office and he sits right there in that chair and we fire one up together and I tell him stories about the early days in the NFL. I remember him telling a story about uh, uh, George Hallis and you know they had a little discussion about you know the, the, the tickets you know and splitting up the money and uh, he said well George said well I'll fight you for it 
And then Mr. Warren said, <laughs> you know, he kind of smiled. He said, he said, George didn't know I was a Golden Glove champion. I'd probably have taken him out. Have a cigar, my boy. You know, I still have the first one that he gave me the day I signed my contract there at the Roosevelt Hotel. May not smoke very good, but it sure does look good. Rooney got so used to his team looking bad that in 1972, he missed the play that changed his team's fortunes forever. As Franco Harris made the immaculate reception, Rooney was on his way to the locker room to console his players after another hard loss. Terry Bradshaw scrambling, 22 seconds left. The Frenchie Fuqua battling with Jack Tatum. Oh my gosh, it's caught out of the air by Franco Harris, and I never saw a second of it. <laughs> I was so busy feeling so bad for them, it never occurred to me they might be good enough to pull it out. <laughs> Two years later, Rooney was celebrating the first of his team's four Super Bowl victories. One of the great opportunities I had was to uh, give a game ball away after the first Super Bowl. And uh, we had decided to give it to Joe Green. And I saw, standing in the background, the Chief. And I realized that I had to give the ball to the Chief. And here comes Andy Russell, walking right toward me, carrying this, the game ball, big grin on his face. I didn't know what was going on. It was pandemonium. One moment I'm passing out Toby's and congratulating our players, and the next I'm on national TV, and Pete Rizzell is presenting me with a Super Bowl trophy. See, here it is. That's the trophy right there, and that's, that's Pete Rizzell. I helped him get his job. Commission. <laughs> <laughs> Turns out his greatest asset wasn't his fists or his knack for picking horses. It was his warm heart that made everyone in Pittsburgh feel like Art Rooney's best friend. To give you an idea what kind of a guy Art Rooney was, uh, the morning after my father died, I went to the funeral home uh, to make arrangements and be there for the first viewing. Art Rooney was there before I got there. He would sit down, especially later in his life, and read the obituaries and circle four or five a day, and that's what he would do at night. He would go in, and people would be stunned. His own wake in 1988 was attended by the entire city, in person and on television. His funeral was televised live on all three stations in town. Uh, I don't know that any other NFL owner could command that in their towns when they die. Art Rooney. Boy, I love that man. I, I, I know you're watching, Art. I love you. You are always, always by me. I love you so much. Art Rooney went from being a marginal suspect character in 1930 to being the most revered man in Pittsburgh history by the end of the 70s, and he deserved to be. People came to see themselves and see Pittsburgh through him. Pittsburghers still pay homage to their patron saint every Sunday outside Heinz Field. Art Rooney always did attract a crowd. I guess that's why the Chief is the most successful play in the 30-year history of the Pittsburgh Public Theater. At one point during the play, uh, when he walked over to the humidor and pulled out a handful of cigars, uh, my wife leaned over to me and said, that's exactly him. After all these years, there's still nothing better than sharing a cigar with the Chief. I'll smoke it after we're finished. I think the play is such a unique gift to Pittsburgh. They have an hour and a half intimate conversation with Art. Everybody gets a big kick out of talking about me, but they don't know. I'm just a kid from the war, a, a horse player, a bootlegger. I got lucky I stuck with it until I finally got the ring. I probably owe him an apology. If the chief was still alive, he'd never allow us to do a big feature on him. Well, sorry, Mr. Rooney. But as every Pittsburgher knows, yours is a story too good not to be told. 
NFL Films is going to be there. They're doing a big story about me, the model football organization and all that. <laughs> you know, they're going to make me out to be a big shot, and I'm no big shot. I'm just a Dems and those guys, and that's the truth. I might just sit right here and let the whole evening slip my mind. Oh, guys, forget, you know.